Hi everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at some tips and tricks and some little secrets that not very many people know about Wargame. It's things that many new players won't know, some experienced players won't know, and Vlad is really keen to help teach people this stuff, so thanks to Vlad for helping me do this. So, I'm just letting everything run fast at the moment. The first thing we're going to see is Recon. We're going to have a little look at Recon and how much of a difference veterancy and size of squads make to recon because this is something that people often overlook and don't realize that the enemy are probably seeing what you're doing before you know what you're doing you won't be able to see them they'll be seeing you and it's because of their squads and their veterancy and people really underestimate how strong the recon can be in this game and i know i've done a little video on recon but this is just sort of to reinforce it and to prove the point of how good these recon units are and how hidden they can really be what we're looking for here is that these two see each other at the same time no mistaking that they're both the same veterancy they're similar size squads five and ten so they're a similar size they have the same veterancy level three chevrons now we're going to compare that to a much smaller squad of two the sniper squad which obviously get an extra bonus and they are elite so that veterancy makes a huge difference we're going to watch these move into position now what we're expecting to see here is that the power pathfinders will not be able to see the spetsnaz but the power pathfinders will become visible they've got a lower veterancy and they're a bigger squad size look how close these are getting they're visible these still aren't visible i could you could get those even closer now vlad is about to show off another ability the spetsnaz vmf have a silenced vintores so he's turned it on and if i switch to me i cannot see them they are firing at me from that distance and i cannot see them because of that silence and because they're hidden from me anyway. Now, if they had loud weapons, yeah, they're gonna be visible. So if he was firing at me with the little ASK-74U, yeah, I'd be able to see him. But I can't see him firing with a silenced rifle. Now he's gonna switch it up and bring in the Spetsnaz screw and I'm gonna bring in my sniper squad. And it's just to prove the point that it goes both ways. The SASF sniper squad are elite. The Spetsnaz Gru are elite, but the Spetsnaz Gru are a bigger squad size. They're a little sniper team of two people. So here they're the same in terms of veterancy, but the SASF should be seeing these guys sooner. So let's see. There you go. The Spetsnaz Gru became visible there. The SASF sniper, not visible at all. Now, if I turn their sniper rifle on, they would be visible. I've just turned it on, and I'm going to fire at these guys unintentionally. See, they came visible. They are visible as a result of firing. If I switch to Vlada, they are visible. That's because they have a bloody big rifle that fires a very large, loud shot. Now we're going to go back in the hiding and we're just going to have a look at these two sniper squads getting close to each other again they're both elite and they should be seeing each other at about the same time but it's just again to show how close they can get to each other before they see each other and if you can imagine the power of pathfinders would potentially need the spetsnaz to be even closer before they see each other so that was there you know it's not a big distance but if you had the power of pathfinders there it might be the spetsnaz can get over here somewhere potentially so that's the basics of veterancy squad size and the difference it makes for the recon and it just shows how important it is to have potentially these tiny recon squads or high veterancy recon squads as close to the front as possible because they make a huge difference in knowing what's going on and also allow you to get early shots off now the next other thing I want to show off just relates to recon and anti-air. 
So here we have an Alouette 3 which has just spotted the Tunguska there. And we're just seeing how close it needs to get to spot the IGLAs. The IGLAs are right on the edge there. They're not in the middle, they're right on the edge. But look how close this chopper has to get. So it was there when it hit this green field. It needs to be that close to detect them. And these are great for putting in forests and things. They might not kill much, but they're pretty cheap. So, you know, you can just scatter them through a forest and they will deter aircraft. They won't kill many of them potentially, but they will deter. And they'll also deter choppers in particular. They are very effective against choppers. And we're going to take a look at some infantry. And what we want to show off with the infantry is what happens when infantry's vehicles, their transport vehicle, gets destroyed next to them and when it doesn't. So what we're looking for here is these two squads of infantry are going to go at it. This is a 10-man squad versus a 15-man squad. Now, the SASF guys don't have a machine gun. They've just got a vector. They have an AK-74 and an RPK, okay? So they should be doing a lot more damage. But what's going to happen here is my guys have the buffle, so they're getting a machine gun support. So they're engaging, and now the buffle's there with its twin machine gun. And I am absolutely wrecking face. I mean, these are elite, but even so, you know, they're lacking the firepower. But that buffle is making all the difference. They're worried, but they're okay. Buffle's calm. Those guys are dead. Simple as that. So now we're going to see what happens when the buffle gets destroyed next to the SASF. And the main thing we're looking for here is what happens to the SASF themselves when the buffle comes into play. So using vehicles like this is great. They're good for supporting your troops, but look what happened the moment that buffle was destroyed next to them. The SASF are now panicked. These are elite troops that are now panicked. They're going to be missing. These guys are also panicked because they had a buffle firing at them, but this now put them on much more equal footing. It makes a huge difference. It weakens your troops massively if they become panicked. So yes, you should definitely be using your vehicles to back up your infantry, but also keep them slightly farther apart because if they're on top of each other and that vehicle gets destroyed, it is gonna panic your infantry massively and then they're gonna be useless. Next little thing we're going to have a look at is the tanks, specifically the T-80 UK. And this should work with a lot of tanks with missiles. We're going to show you a little secret. Some people might even call it an exploit, but uh, it's been in the game since forever and they've never patched it. So I think this is just one of those skill level things. My login is going to go up against the T-80 UK, both very strong tanks. So pause it there, and slow it down. So I'm doing an attack move this way and Vlada is doing a bit more control on his tank. If you'll notice he's pulling back because he has that long range missile and he's letting the missile fire. And when the missile hits or misses, that starts reloading. But in the meantime, he's switched to the cannon. So the cannon fires. And now he's going to turn the cannon off and immediately fire a missile. And once that missile lands, he's turned on the cannon again and the cannon immediately fires. And then he'll turn the cannon off and the missile will immediately fire. And now that the missile is fired, he will switch the cannon back on and take another shot. Now, unfortunately for him, his missiles missed and his shot started missing. So the logum is actually going to win out this fight, but it's just a demonstration of how you can quickly switch weapons on a tank like that it just fires a lot faster use, using those missiles 
in a more effective way. So that was just a few quick tips that Vlad wanted to share with everyone. I think they're very good tips. I think remembering that recon is very important is something that you should always do when you're playing Wargame. I think remembering that the vehicles that come with your infantry are both a great asset and potentially a great detriment if they are destroyed right next to your infantry. IGLA troops, the man pads, things like that, very, very useful and very underutilized. They will do a lot of damage. And then the final thing is just thinking about how to effectively use the weapons on a tank. So just a few little tips there to help with your war game playing. If that was helpful, please do like, share and subscribe. Comment down below if you have any other tips that uh, people might not know about. And I'll see you all soon for some more war game.